Hello, welcome to Technical Founders. This is the first video in the engineering series. And before we start making an app, we need to have a basic understanding of the foundations of object-oriented programming. And I said in the first video that we will be using C Sharp for our development, but before we actually get started, let's just have some basic things out that are really going to go a long way to helping us understand uh, how the language actually works. So let's start with the most simple idea, which is the idea of an object. So an object is what it sounds like intuitively, and it's best illustrated by example. So this is an eraser object. It's a thing that has certain properties. For example, it has a color, it has a length, it has a width, it has a brand, a weight, etc. So it has specific properties and there's also specific things that it can do. This eraser object can do very specific things. For the most obvious one would be to erase. So an, an eraser can erase. It's one of its behaviors. It can actually erase. And a behavior of an object, we call it a method. We just call it a method. So an object, that's it's a thing that has specific properties and methods. Now that's what an object is. Now, what is a class? That's the second uh, most important thing that we need to understand in object-oriented programming. What is a class? So a class is the abstract representation of an object. So for example, I mentioned that, th that this eraser has specific properties. So it has a color, width, length, etc. But if I, if I tell you eraser, you know what I mean. I mean, you might have a specific eraser in mind, but, it's, but it doesn't really matter. We've seen enough erasers in our lives that, that we can know, understand intuitively what, a, what an eraser is in the abstract. So for example, I've drawn uh, here a diagram of an eraser class, the abstract representation. And as you see, I wrote down the, uh, some of the properties and methods. So height, width, color, composition, etc., and erase. The parenthesis, parenthesis here means it's a method. It's just how we write it, how we distinguish methods from, uh, from properties. But it's not really important right now. It's just so you will start to get used to seeing how a method is, 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 is written. So this is the erase method. It's something that the eraser can do. But, as you, but I did not assign properties uh, here. I did not assign specific values. I did not say height equals five inches, width equals two inches color equals black. Like I did not assign specific values to those properties. This, this, the, the, the eraser class, this is the class name. These are the properties and this is the, these are, these will be the behaviors. This is like the blueprint. This is in the abstract sense. What, what is this object in the abstract? And the difference between a class and an object is that an object is an instance of a class. So you have the class, the blueprint, the abstract representation of the object, and then you have the actual object that, that is constructed out of the class. So for example, this eraser would be an instance of the eraser class, and it has specific, specific values for its properties. So this has a specific height, a specific length, color, etc. So that's, ba that's uh, in a nutshell what, uh, what an object is and what a class is. And those are basically the building blocks of, uh, of object-oriented programming. And in fact, an application, and in our case, a mobile application, is a collection of objects. At the fundamental level, it's a collection of objects interacting together. So very important. Now, we'll, so th this brings us into the f one of the first key ideas of object-oriented programming, which is abstraction. So abstraction, we already went through it. It's exactly what we just discussed. So um, again, the abstract representation of, a, of an object, that's what, a, that's what abstraction is. So this would be an example of, um, of a class, but it's, it was built or using um, abstraction. So we already went through it. It's very, very, very um, simple to, to understand. This is uh, our way of constructing classes, our way of constructing our blueprints to generate our specific objects for our application. Great. Now, the second one would be encapsulation. And the idea of encapsulation is that you enclose or encapsulate your object's attributes and methods, and then you hide everything about that object except what is absolutely necessary to expose. So 
the, the, the purpose is to reduce dependencies between different parts of the application uh, so that a change in one place won't cascade down and require multiple changes elsewhere. So, for example, let's say you have this bank account uh, class. Let's say you're building a finance applica mobile application and you have a bank account class and it has certain properties like account number, balance, etc. And you have certain methods like open, close, withdraw, etc. Now, if, you, if you, you have several different objects in this application interacting among, um, amongst each other, you want, you want those interactions to be what we call loosely coupled. So you don't want to have strong dependencies between those objects. And encapsulation is, 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 is how we do it. It's, it's, we actually hide um, as much as we can about this class. So for example, let's say, um, the date that this bank, that a certain uh, bank account was open, the other parts of the application may not need to know that. So we would just hide that from the rest of the application. And we'll get into this later, but just so you know, for us, if we're actually hiding it uh, and making it available only within the class itself, we use what we call a keyword. Now the keyword is private. So we mark the property private or the method the behavior we call it we mark it private and if we wanted to make it accessible to the rest of the application we mark it public so either private or public defines whether the the specific property or method is accessible only from within the class or it's accessible to all the other parts of the application and now if we restrict a direct access to that to a certain piece of data we only have to worry about this one class whenever we want to make a change. Let's say we want to make a change to one of the properties or one of the behaviors, then we don't have to worry about breaking the other 17 parts of the application that, actually, that might be depending on this, on this particular property. So it just makes, makes it very simple or makes it a lot easier to maintain your application and to extend it by, by reducing all these uh, dependencies between different parts of the application. So that's, that's the idea of encapsulation. Now you might ask, how much should I hide? You know, you have, you, we have all these classes, and how much should you uh, make private, and how much should you just make public and available to the rest of the application? And the, the principle is to hide as much as possible, because that is going, to, again, to minimize the dependencies between different parts of the application, making it very simple to, uh, or a lot simpler to move forward and, and continue uh, the development. Okay, so that's encapsulation. The third, idea, very important idea, is inheritance. So let's say for your application you have both employee classes and customer classes and they both might be sharing the same properties. For example, in the abstract, for example, the name property, I've written it here, so the name, so you, let's say you have name, email, phone number, so certain things are shared between employee and customer but you don't want to be writing all of the things that they share into each one and have all, the, all these classes that have re repeated properties in, in, to, in all of them. It's not very efficient. Now, inheritance, what it allows us to do is to define a parent class. This class, in this case, as an example, we're using um, the word person as the name of the class and it has name, email, phone, any method that allows to change the, the email address. This is just an example. But now, if you have an employee and a customer, they both have these exact same properties, so you don't write them once. You actually create a separate class, the parent class, where you define those things, and then you define child classes, which inherit from the parent class. So as, when you define an employee class or a customer class that inherit from person, they automatically get all the things that person has. They're inherited to these to, the, to these other classes. Now, these classes might have their own individual properties, custom properties that they need. For example, an employee might have a department property. Where's, where, where's the, the employee? Marketing department, IT, business development, where is the employee, right? Um, and it may, might have methods, for example, like join the department or join the company, retire, that's specific to the employee. And then you have a customer which might have their own, like, you know, register and an employee doesn't register. It's a different, there's different processes. So they share properties and methods, but they have their own. For, for, and for example, in this case, 
it doesn't make any sense for the um, for the customer to have a department property, for example, because there's two different things. So they have their own properties and methods, and they both have the common thing that they inherit from the parent class here. And this is just um, very, very nice because you can reuse your code. It's a lot cleaner. And again, it's going to make it easier to develop moving forward. It's, it's going to minimize the clutter in your code. And just it's just a, a, a great practice and a great thing to be, uh, to be using here in Heritage. So very important. And the fourth uh, idea is what we call polymorphism. And it's just a fancy word, really. And polymorphism is best illustrated by example. So for example, let's say we have a, for our finance app, let's say we're building a finance app, we have a bank account class, again, certain properties, certain methods, and let's just grab the particular uh, withdraw method here. So let's say I want to have specific kinds of bank accounts. So I will do what I did here. I will inherit from bank account, and now I can have, for example, checking account, savings account, etc. And let's say, and this is just for, for example, a purposes so to understand polymorphism, let's say that for one of the particular kinds of bank account, in this case, let's say a savings account, let's say that the withdrawal method needs to be slightly different for, the, for that account. So let's say that we have a business rule that if the, the, per, the person uh, withdraws from, from, that, from the savings account more often than every 15 days, there's going to be a penalty let's say, I don't know, $20 or something like that, uh, there's gonna be a penalty. So the withdrawal method that they're inheriting is we need to modify it. We need to tweak it a little bit. So we, the process of modifying a, a method that you inherited, we call it overriding a method. And we'll come to overriding methods later when we're, when we're getting more into the complexities of building an application. But basically, over, so overriding a method uh, the withdrawal method in this example would be an example of polymorphism. So it's it's going you're you're going to use what you inherited, just the basic withdrawal. You still want to take money out, but add a condition to it. Let's say so if the customer withdraws within less than 15 days, uh, there's going to be a penalty. So that's just an example of polymorphism. And this is not too too important right now. You don't have to go out and be looking for polymorphism. It typically like in this case. Uh, it arises naturally. You don't have to be thinking about it too much. So it's really, it's going to arise naturally in your application. So those will be the four um, fundamental ideas um, of, of object-oriented programming. And of course the object and the, and the class, which is what the application is really made, made up of. So in the next videos, we'll go, we'll start getting actually into C-sharp and then into the actual mobile development and building our first mobile application. But if you have any questions, any thoughts, any comments, please leave them at the bottom. Um, also, please subscribe. You'll, you'll get notifications when the, the video, videos come out. I'm consistently putting them out at least once a week, and you'll be the first to know. And if you have any feedback, and again, anything, um, just, just let me know. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.